There are a lot of animals that exist in the world that weren't around during the time of Noah's Ark. Some of them were made by scientists, and some were created from an unexpected attraction between animals of different species. These animals are called hybrids. Uh, these beautiful animals that we call mules. Here's one. From the child of a donkey and a zebra to a transparent frog, here are 20 hybrid animals created by scientists you won't believe exist. Wolf dog. A wolf dog is exactly what it sounds like, the combination of a wolf and a dog. It's a canine produced by the mating of a domestic dog, a red wolf, gray wolf, or an Ethiopian wolf to produce a hybrid. Domestic dogs are usually mated with gray wolves because they're genetically very close and considered the same species. A dog didn't stroll into the woods or a forest one day, fall in love with a wolf and then mate with them. No, wolf dogs are the result of people intentionally breeding them. Wolf dogs are even more popular now since their creation doesn't usually involve a wolf parent. If a wolf dog and wolf dog mate, their baby's going to be a wolf dog, and if a wolf dog mates with a dog, they're going to get a wolf dog as well. Many experts believe they can tell the difference between a dog, a wolf, and a wolf dog, but the truth is they can't, and they've been proven wrong in the law courts when providing their evidence. They're usually bred in captivity by backyard breeders for various purposes the most popular being as exotic pets. The behavior of a wolf dog depends on the degree of wolf it has and the way it was trained. Generally, they're highly independent, scared of humans, territorial, and have incredibly high energy. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. This looks to us like a strange one-eyed puppy with two protruding tongues. There's no nose or face, just the eye and the tongue. What could have happened? Do you think it's the result of a crossbreeding mission gone wrong? Well, the poor Cyclops was actually birthed by a regular dog somewhere in the Philippines. In fact, the dog gave birth to two puppies, and the other appeared totally fine. The owner took the dog to the vet, and everyone was stunned. No one knew what had happened to this animal. They guessed that the mother dog must have eaten toxins while she was pregnant, but who knows if that's really it. The puppy was believed to have a rare condition called Cyclopia caused by a genetic defect or toxins which affects brain development. It could have been that, it could have been something else, but poor Cyclops died later that night. What do you think caused the puppy's condition? Do you think it's the result of a failed scientific experiment? We want to hear what you have to say. Drop your thoughts in the comments using the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Belgian Blue. Uh, look again. Is that a bull with muscles? With abs? Oh yes, it is, and it's called a Belgian Blue. It's a breed of beef cattle from Belgium. This may be hard to believe, but the Belgian Blue has a natural mutation. The mutation is in the myostatin gene, which codes for protein. Myostatin is a protein that restrains muscle development. It interferes with fat disposition, and because the truncated myostatin gene is unable to function at its average capacity, it results in accelerated lean muscle growth. A newborn calf with this condition has two times the number of muscle fibers than a calf with no myostatin gene mutation. In fact, a double-muscled calf at birth weighs more than a regular calf. The Belgian Blue has high demand all over the world. You can find it in Russia, Mexico, Tunisia, Morocco, and everywhere in Europe. Their demand is high because of the quality of their meat. Unlike what you may think, their meat is healthy and contains less cholesterol than chicken. The fineness of its fibers makes it tender and the meat has low fat. Another quality of the BB is that they're very calm and easy to manipulate. Why wouldn't everybody want them? Super Ball Python Greg Graziani bought a very brightly colored male ball python from a Miami reptile importer in May 1994. At the National Reptile Breeders Expo, the next year, he found someone from New England reptile distributors, Kevin McCurley, whose female snake looked exactly like his. The two must have been so excited, probably pointing out similarities between their snakes, like, look, they both have spots on their heads. The two men were sure that their snake's coloration was a genetic mutation, they refused to sell their unusual pets, and in 1997, Graziani bred with his normal female. He thought they'd give birth to normal kids, you know, regular-looking ball pythons. He was shocked when they hatched 
and all looked like their father. McCurley's snake was also bred, and all the babies, from the male and female ball pythons, looked identical. Graziani called his animals Type 2 Jungle, and McCurley called his Pastel Jungles. The two names were combined into Pastel Ball Pythons. The pythons are lighter than normal ball pythons, and much of their brown pigment is replaced by shades of dark yellow to burnt orange. They also have lovely light-colored eyes and faded light patches on their bodies called blushes. If well taken care of, pastel ball pythons can live for over 30 years. They hide during the day because they're nocturnal, and at night, they emerge to hunt prey. When threatened, they ball up and hide their heads in beautiful gold or green eyes. Zebroids If someone walks up to you and randomly says the word zebroid, what will you think it is? A disease? Well, a zebroid is the offspring of any cross between a zebra and any other equine to create a hybrid. They have been bred since the 19th century, and there are a lot of these combinations. A lot. A donkey sire and zebra dam will produce a donkra, which will have a back stripe and a ventral stripe. A horse sire and a zebra dam will produce a hebra, but they're rare. A zorse is the offspring of a horse mare and a zebra stallion. They combine the zebra striping overlaid on colored areas of the hybrid's coat. This cross is also called zebrule, zebros, zebrula, or zebra mule. The reverse pairing of a horse sire and a zebra dam is rare and will produce a hebra or zebrini. A pony mare and zebra stallion will have a zoni. A cross between a donkey and a zebra is called a zonkey or zinki. Because zebras are wild animals, unlike domesticated horses and donkeys, they pass their wild nature traits to their offspring, so you wouldn't want to keep hybrids with domestic animals. Zebroids are quite popular, even in the entertainment industry. The 2007 movie, I'm a Reed Fish, stars a Zorus named Zebrina. In Racing Stripes, the Zebra Stripes and Grey Arabian Mare Sandy have a Zorus son. Charles Darwin also mentioned several zebra hybrids in his works. The Pizzly Bear Pizzly bears sound like the name of a less dangerous grizzly bear, but it isn't. The pizzly bear is a rare ursid hybrid of polar and grizzly bears that have occurred both in captivity and in the wild. In 2006, a DNA test was run on a unique-looking bear that had been shot near Zach Harbor, Northwest Territories, in the Canadian Arctic. It was the first reported and confirmed case of bear hybrids. There are several theories of how such combinations naturally occur but they're all hypothetical. It's so difficult to figure out because although polar bears and brown bears are sister species, they live two different lifestyles and occupy adjacent regions. Polar bears breed, hunt, and build maternity dens on sea ice. Brown or grizzly bears, on the other hand, live a very terrestrial lifestyle. Scientists think that the exception for this phenomenon is climate change. Polar bears are affected by the melting of Arctic ice, so they're forced onto dry land where they meet grizzly bears. One German researcher explains it like this. It's as if two groups had long been living separately, but in adjacent rooms, and suddenly man came along and pushed open the door between them. Scientists suppose that the close proximity of the two species explains the hybridization. The Cheeto Cheetahs are known to be fast. Faster than Flash? Most definitely. What are Cheetos known for? Well, let's see. The Cheeto is a new cat breed with Aka cat and Bengal cat heritage. They have leopard-like spots and are pretty large. The cat has the ferocious looks of a wild cat, but the temperament of a gentle, domesticated one. They're friendly, intelligent, affectionate, playful, and sociable. They make good pets. Cheetos can run, but not as fast as cheetahs. Of course, they're natural-born climbers, too. The first Cheeto cat was bred in 2003 by Carol Dryman of Windhaven Exotics Cattery. The plan was to create the most dangerous-looking domesticated cat ever, and they did a good job, right? Aka cats are also mixed breeds of Siamese and Abyssinian breeding stock, and Bengals started as a cross between domestic cats and Asian leopard cats. So, the Cheeto has a heritage of wild species and a history of cross-breeding. Since the first breed was created, the animal has spread across the UK, New Zealand, and the US, Canada, and Australia. Cheeto cats come in black spotted silver, brown spots and cinnamon with black spots. They have larger ears than the average cat and a much stronger jaw. They have big, bright, almond-shaped eyes. Their appearance is quite fearsome. The Cheeto is bigger than both its parent breeds. Pomsky Dog 
The combination of a Pomeranian and a Siberian Husky resulted in the Pomsky. The first Pomsky wasn't really a Pomsky. The story is fascinating. In an article in 2011, BuzzFeed suggested how adorable a Pomeranian and Siberian Husky hybrid would look. They made some edits and displayed images in the article. The internet fell in love with this virtual animal. But if you know these two breeds, you'll know that their sizes are too different for a cross between them to be realistic. So although people loved the hybrid, they didn't think it was possible. Until a year later, through artificial insemination, breeders created the Pomsky, and it was just as cute as it was in the photographs. Pomskys look like mini Huskies, but have the charisma of both their parents. You can say they're Huskies trapped in Pomeranian small bodies. Their eyes! Oh, they're the loveliest set of eyes in the world. The eye colors range from piercing blue to light hazel. And sometimes, you may come across a Pomsky with two different colored eyes. They can be quite stubborn and timid. They may not want to meet the neighbor or the boyfriend who stayed the night, but they do love to play. Glowfish The glowfish is a new type of fish. They're called glowfish because of their fluorescent coloration. They really do have vibrant colors like orange, red, green, blue, purple, and pink. The colors aren't called green, red, and stuff. They're called cosmic blue, electric green, starfire red, sunburst orange, moonrise pink, and galactic purple. Even if you don't know what these colors look like, you know they're flashy. That's what they sound like. They've been created from several fish species, including tiger barbs, zebrafish, rainbow shark, and Siamese fighting fish. The glowfish is not a hybrid or any two or more of these fish. It was developed by introducing different fluorescent proteins into the fish's genome at the early development stages. The goal was to improve environmental and biomedical research. But today, the glowfish is popular within the ornamental fish pet trade. The color of glowfish is caused by genes. These genes have been placed within the genetic code of each fish so they're passed from one generation to the next. The genes produce proteins that fluoresce. That's where the glow and glowfish comes from. The fish absorb light and then send it out again, giving them their glowing appearance. The mule. The mule is one of the most popular hybrids that exists. You know what a mule is, right? It's a domestic equine hybrid between a donkey and a horse. It's the male or female offspring of a male donkey, jack, and a female horse, mare. The majority of the mules that exist are working. In World War I, they were used to carry food supplies, artillery, and wounded soldiers. In some countries, owning a mule can be a significant source of income for a family, doing manual work like building materials, carrying bricks and food and water. Mules can live up to 50 years, but the overworked ones don't get to live for that long. Mules have a notable history. They were present in Israel and Judah during the reign of King David in the Bible. Homer, in his Iliad, noted the arrival of mules in Asia Minor in 800 BC. Even George Washington bred mules in his home in Mount Vernon. He understood early enough that they were cheaper to maintain and more docile than donkeys. The summary of it all is that mules are more patient, long-lived and hard-working horses, which have a long history of working as drought animals and war animals too. Donkra The donkra is the offspring of a male donkey and female zebra and it was bred in a zoo in Southeast China. It makes you wonder what goes on in zoos all around the world. Donkeys are supposed to be docile and meek and all of that. And how did they get the attention of the black and white striped aggressive female? According to staffers, the zebra, donkeys and sheep all roam freely at the zoo, which led to a natural pairing of the park's only zebra with a male donkey. She was the lone zebra. It must have been so lonely for her. It makes a little sense now, we guess. The zebra had a difficult labor and childbirth. When the donkra finally arrived, it weighed 30 kilograms and was about a meter tall. The child has striped zebra-like legs, a brown donkey-esque body, and big black eyes. You can't miss it. Of course, zoo visitors were charmed by the innocent and funny-looking animal. Poor thing, it wouldn't really fit in with the donkeys in the zoo. They must have thought it an outcast or something. Donkras are not as popular as other zebroids. You can see the bizarre situation in which this one was born. It rarely ever happens. Wolfen A wolfen is an extremely rare hybrid. It's the offspring of a female common bottlenose dolphin and a male false killer whale. 
Surprisingly, the Waffen, unlike many other hybrids, is fertile. The first Waffen in America was born at Sea Life Park in Hawaii on May 15, 1985. Her name was Kikimailu, meaning from the peaceful ocean. She was able to recreate, not once or twice, but three times. The Waffen is a special breed. It doesn't exactly take after any of its parents. Instead, it's an intermediate between both species. It's larger than a bottlenose but smaller than a false killer whale. While the bottlenose has 88 teeth and the false killer whale has 44, the Waffen has 66, somewhere in between both. It's been reported that Waffens are born in the wild and captivity, but all the reports of Waffens have been in captivity. For instance, Kiki Mailu was born at Sea Life Park. The first recorded Waffen was born in a Tokyo Sea World so it's not really certain if the bottlenose dolphin and male false killer whale will mate in normal natural circumstances in the spacious and vast ocean. Millard Millard ducks are the creations of a crossing between two different species of ducks, the Muscovy and the Pekin. It's possible to reproduce the breed naturally, but they're sterile hybrids, so they're mostly produced by in vitro fertilization and hatcheries. You may be wondering why do scientists go through the whole process to create ducks? Well, the Millard duck is more popular and important than you think. They're a cherished culinary ingredient, prized for their rich, dark meat. These ducks actually make up the vast majority of faux gras sold in the world. Millards probably originated in France because they're one of the biggest breeders of the animal. The Millard inherits its large size and dark meat from the Muscovy duck, and from the Pekin duck, it gets its white pinnage and docility. If you want to buy a Millard duck, there's one major thing you need to do ensure there's enough space for it to move around. They're homebodies, content to live in one place for the rest of their lives. They love lakes, ponds, and other water bodies that have lots of vegetation, so they can go around looking for small fish, crabs, reptiles, and frogs to munch on. They're usually white with pink beaks, brown eyes, flat tails, and orange legs. They're really beautiful creatures. Lepin Lions are dangerous and scary, and so are leopards. They may look alike in some ways, but you can never mistake one for the other. Now let's talk about what happens when a large leopard and a lioness mate. They produce a hybrid called lepin. It's fascinating how two creatures can blend into one beautiful, distinct breed. At first glance, you'll think it's a lion. Then you look closely in its spots and wonder what in the world is going on. The first reported and documented lepin was bred in 1910 in India. It was a cross between a male leopard and a lioness. They produced two cubs. One died after two months, and the other is the reason we can talk about this today. Reginald Eines Pocock, who documented the description of the hybrid, wrote that it was spotted like a leopard, but the spots on its sides were smaller than of a leopard and brown like that of a baby lion. The ears, although similar, didn't look exactly like that of a leopard. Lepins are larger than leopards and apparently combine features from the leopard and lioness. The head of the animal resembles that of a lion, while the rest of the body looks more like a leopard. They climb like leopards and also enjoy water, just like leopards. Oliver Oliver is different from all the other animals we've talked about. He isn't a species or anything, it's one unique animal. Oliver He was a performing animal, famous because he was thought to be a human Z. He could walk upright instead of on all fours. He looked more similar to a human than other chimpanzees and acted more like humans. He had human-like features, light-colored eyes, and a soft voice which made him look and sound like a man. He spent more time with humans because he could hardly interact with other apes, but he wasn't a human-chimpanzee hybrid. He was born in the late 1950s and was already a young animal with unique traits when Frank and Jeanette Berger acquired him. The burgers realized just how special he was and used him for entertainment purposes. Oliver was more intelligent than other apes. He could handle tools and simple machines. He could push heavy loads around in a wheelbarrow. The chimp could even paint. As he grew older, he drank morning coffee every day like humans. He could mix drinks and create his own cocktails in the evening. Maybe he became more intelligent as he grew up because of his proximity to humans. But his natural intelligence, however, allowed him to learn these abilities. Many animals spend a lot of time with humans and don't learn a thing. Because of his unique skills, Oliver was mishandled and abused and even captured. He suffered from arthritis and lost his ability to walk. 
he even became partially blind at some point, but he died as a free animal in 2012, and a playground for the chimpanzees was built in his honor. Koi Wolf Wolves and coyotes are interbreeding, and they're creating koi wolves. They have the coyote characteristics of lack of fear of human-developed areas. A coyote can show up anywhere. The koi wolf also has the wolf characteristics of pack hunting and aggression. This combination isn't the most exciting one. It spells nothing but trouble for farmers. These animals are bigger, smarter, and bolder than regular coyotes. To top it off, they hunt in packs to prey on livestock like cattle and sheep in broad daylight. They're 55 pounds heavier than coyotes. They have longer legs, larger jaws, smaller ears, and bushier tails. Wolves prefer hunting in forests. Coyotes dislike it. So what does that mean? It means they're skilled at catching prey in both densely wooded areas and open terrain. Wolf and coyote hybrids form more cooperative groups, sadly, and are less aggressive with each other while playing. The sound they make is also an intriguing combination of both parents. Koi wolves start off with a deep vocalization like regular wolves, then change partway into a coyote-like high-pitched yipping. We guess it's okay to say that farmers are in a whole lot of trouble. Jag Lion Is it a jaguar? Is it a lion? Yes, it's a jag lion. Again, this is the result of the things that go on behind zoo walls. A black jaguar, Diablo, and a lion. Lola made it unexpectedly at Bear Creek Wildlife Sanctuary in Ontario, Canada, sometime in 2006, and produced two jag lion babies. The story of Diablo and Lola is a sweet one. They came to Bear Creek within weeks of one another and were fed in the same nursery. They basically grew up together, and when they reached maturity, it was difficult to separate them. When it was attempted, both animals became anxious and suffered from depression. Lola even refused to eat. Bear Creek staff tried everything and nothing worked, so they had to keep them together, and that's how the babies came about. So the pregnancy wasn't coincidental, they were in love. Tsunami, the male, is spotted, but Jazara, the female, inherited the jaguar's dominant melanism gene. She's as black as night, and it's the most beautiful thing. The hybrids are carnivores, they also like to hunt at night, they eat lizards, birds, hares, turtle, and mice. Tsunami and Jazara may be the only jag lions in the world. See-through frog Glass frogs are real. A glass frog is any of a group of tree frogs which have translucent bellies and chests and are found in the New World tropics. The glass frog is so transparent that when you look at it closely, you can see its heart pumping blood into the arteries and food moving through its gut. See where the glass in its name comes from? As if that's not magical enough, the translucency on the sides and parts of the frog's back is a type of camouflage that allows the edges of the frog to blend with the relative darkness or brightness of its surroundings. Scientists, however, have also created see-through frogs. They crossed two color mutants with recessive genes, gray-eyed and black-eyed, through artificial insemination. At first, the offspring appeared normal because of the presence of dominant genes. But brother and sister started mating and produced frogs with translucent skin as tadpoles. This is the first transparent four-legged animal to be developed artificially. When the animal is viewed laterally, organs such as the heart, ovaries, lungs, liver, intestines, and stomach are visible. Scientists don't have to dissect the frog to observe certain processes, like induced ovulation, they're all visible through the skin. Zubron Leopold Waliki first created the Zubron in 1847. It's a hybrid of wizen and domestic cattle. After the creation of bison, it turned out to be more durable and less susceptible to disease. Zubrin could be grown with no farm infrastructure on marginal grazing land with minimal husbandry too. So it was easy and cheap to breed these animals. The Polish Academy of Sciences continued to work on Zubrin herds in 1958. They had various laboratories, and during the first 16 years of experimenting, 71 were born. We wonder what they called the animals before 1969, when all of these experiments were going on. Because the name Zubron was officially chosen in 1969 from hundreds of proposals sent to a Polish weekly magazine during a contest they organized. In the late 1980s, the experiments ceased. Today, only a few surviving herds are kept at the national park there. Zubron are heavy animals. The males weigh up to 1,200 kilograms and the females up to 810. 
They're also powerful and can tolerate harsh weather conditions. It's not surprising anyway. Look at how they're built. Zo. Before you start wondering what Zo means, we'll tell you. It's a Tibetan name for hybrid creatures that are the cross between yaks and domesticated cattle. A yak is an ox-like animal. They're sometimes called yaddle, a combination of the words yak and cattle. Zo inherits one protein type from each parent, meaning it has two types of proteins. They also inherit their mitochondrial structure and function changes. This affects the Zo's ability to survive in higher altitudes than both parents can. They're also larger and stronger than both yak and cattle. Parents wish for their kids to be better than them, so that's okay. In Tibet, Zo are used as pack animals because they're able to survive at high elevations, as well as yaks do. They owe their size and strength to their cattle ancestry. They basically have the shaggy coats of yaks and the facial creatures of cattle. Sadly, Zo are sterile. However, their female counterpart, Zomo, are fertile and can be bred back to other cattle or yaks. Since Zomo can be backcrossed, it means many yaks and cattle that are believed to be pure actually carry each other's genetic material. Tarsier. Last but not least is the Tarsier. They look like they're from a magical fairy tale. They're the smallest primates and maybe the most dangerous. They're found in Southeast Asia and the Philippines. They're known for their extremely large ears, eyes outweighing their brains and lacking eye shine, their carnivorous diet, and their tarsal bones, where their name comes from. Tarsiers aren't hybrids, but they have characteristics of so many animals that make it seem as though they are. They catch insects by jumping on them. They love to prey on spiders, cockroaches, beetles, and grasshoppers. They're the only entirely carnivorous primates. They also prey on lizards, birds, bats, and snakes. They're vertical clingers and leapers, so they move around by launching themselves from trunk to trunk thanks to their greatly elongated hind limbs. Another remarkable fact about them is that they can turn their heads nearly 180 degrees in each direction, allowing them the ability to rotate their heads almost 360 degrees. Only owls can do better than that. Another thing that makes them different from other primates is that they're venomous. They can secrete a toxin from a gland in their arm. When in danger, they mix it with their saliva to create a venom that can cause an allergic reaction in predators. Some scientists believe that Tarsier's poisonous bite, plus their hissing sound and other behaviors that they exhibit, evolved as a result of them mimicking venomous snakes like cobras. The last fact about Tarsiers today is that they hate being touched and kept in enclosed spaces. Tarsiers aren't going to perform for or gape at you like a monkey. It's going to panic throw a tantrum, and maybe even kill itself. That's it for today. Which of these animals wowed you the most? And if you could, which hybrid animal would you create and why? We hope you enjoyed today's video. We've got more where this came from.